Your Majesty, our worst fears have come true. The weirdest part about creating a spiritual successor to those old Zelda CDI games is that nobody actually played them. The Wand of Gamelon and the Faces of Evil explicitly were not classics. That's the whole bit. They're goofy software locked to goofier hardware, and what little spot they take up in the video game zeitgeist is owed to memes, not their actual content. Here! Thanks. Enter Arzette the Jewel of Faramore, a 2D adventure platformer with the same expressive meme style, but with substance that can satisfy more than just a cutaway in a YouTube video. Arzette infuses its platforming missions with heavy backtracking and powerful unlocks, almost like a Metroidvania without the interconnected world. It doesn't quite stick its landing, the campaign ends with a deflatingly short final boss, but otherwise Arzette delivers absurdist fun in a breezy and retro package. You struck luck, my friend. These wares aren't elsewhere. My goods will improve your fortunes, so long as you improve mine. Publisher Limited Run Games and developer CDI Software are early clues into the kind of experience that's in store for you. Even if you don't splurge on the boutique physical collector's versions, RZ is still a game that worships retro hardware. On startup, you get CDI's production logo animation, which is disc insertion into a fake console. Once you actually start playing, it feels so effortlessly old. It recreates so many gaming sensations that would otherwise feel like antiquity if it didn't pull them together so well. You harshly transition between movement and combat states. Weapon swings bring you to a complete stop rather than giving you a little nudge forward, as has become the industry standard. All conversations with Arzette's memorable cast of characters are initiated by hitting them with your sword, which suddenly drops the background music channel before bringing in the dialogue. It's more than just a fun visual novelty, too. You'll need to reach back to folds you haven't used in a while and remember how to do those weird little hop attacks at the edge of an enemy's hitbox to offset your lack of mid-swing mobility. You'll also find a lot of success in cheesing their simple left and right movements on whatever platform they're locked on and peppering them with ranged attacks from safety. It all sells the illusion that you're not just playing a throwback, but playing something that throwbacks are throwing back to. With one key exception, difficulty. RZ is not a punishing game. Checkpoints are frequent, lives are infinite, and an average playthrough will only take 3-4 to four hours. It's an enjoyable little journey that teleports all but the frustration from booting up a game from last century. It's also a worthy homage to those old goofy CDI games as much as it is to Zelda more generally. You've got an evil porcelain wizard trying to take over the land, magical triangular MacGuffins you gotta collect, and booting up the game actually starts its logo zoom out from the ZE in RZ, subconsciously filling your gamer brain with the name Zelda before you've even touched the controller. The writing is self-aware without going overboard. It's a pleasure interacting with every NPC and seeing what ridiculous way they will express themselves and finding out whatever task they will have for you. What's surprising is how well Arzette nails an adventure fantasy in such a small and silly package. The elevator pitch makes it sound like it's here to sell a vibe with the game as an afterthought, but there's more to it than that. On top of its simple and enjoyable combat, there's a tangible progression system befitting Greek heroes and Hylians alike. Magical boots, protective cloaks, and enchanted swords are but a few of the unlocks you can expect. Some are mandatory, some are optional, but all make a significant impact on your traversal and combat. You weave in and out of levels via a menu, but still need to take those mental notes of locks whose keys you don't have yet. It gives that adventuring sensation, but doesn't let its reach exceed its grasp, and I found myself drawn to finding as many of these powers and extra hearts as I could. Maybe too many of them? By the time I got to the final boss, it was over in seconds with its challenge so invalidated that I didn't get to experience all those wonderful mid-fight combat animations they built for the encounter. Otherwise, the handful of bosses that do exist are an enjoyable challenge that play with the absurdity of the character designs. Enough! <laughs> Rain it in! RZ The Jewel of Faramore isn't just an animation project in a gaming framework, but a worthwhile retro adventure in its own right. Its blend of snappy platforming levels combined with non-linear exploration give it meat without being too exhaustive. Its unmistakable style captures a phantom nostalgia for something I've never even played. Our Zet may be based on a meme, but it certainly isn't one. Get back before dinner! Be safe, my daughter. <laughs>